Hello and welcome to this Lightroom black and white editing tutorial. Today I'm going to take this mediocre RAW file and I'm going to turn it into a very dramatic and very interesting black and white picture just like this while of course explaining to you every single step I do from start to finish. Alright, so let's get started by turning the picture into black and white and the thing that really makes this picture is this little house. I think without this little house uh, there would be just no connection to the photo. So I think that is definitely very unique, you know, such a little house compared to this vast and roaring landscape and these massive clouds. So that is exactly what I'm gonna pay special attention to and I really wanna, you know, bring over this dramatic mood and this little house in this massive landscape. So first of all let me crop the picture and just get rid of some of that foreground so we have even more sky. Now another thing that I thought about was just to crop down some of that sky so there is more attention on the foreground but I really don't like this actually because by having so many clouds once again the house looks even smaller and the whole landscape becomes more epic in my opinion. So let's get started with actual editing. First of all I'm gonna bring down the highlights so we retrieve as much as detail uh, as possible from the clouds and then I'm gonna raise the shadows and the reason I'm doing that is so I can bring down the blacks and bring the contrast to the right without actually losing all of the detail in the shadow portions. So let me just fine tune those two sliders and you see if I would for example have shadows at zero it's completely black, the picture doesn't work and by bringing up the shadows and bringing down the blacks and contrast to the right you really get a lot of contrast of course and a lot of uh, darkness, a lot of dramatic look without actually uh, taking away all of the shadow detail. Then to clarity, I always say don't be afraid to go into the minus clarity, but in this particular photo I really think that going into the plus quite a bit works really really well because it does bring out the texture so much and it makes everything seem so harsh, which is really the look that I'm going for here. Then let's finish up with this picture. I think overall exposure is fine. I mean I could make it even darker, but I think it's getting a little bit too much. So let's just leave it at there for the moment. And tonal curve here, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Actually, I think I'm going to raise the highlights because that really gives a lot of dynamic in the clouds, even though that makes them even more bright, which is not a thing that I like. But the added dynamic is definitely worth it. With the tonal curve, just be sure to play around with these sliders and look at the dynamic, not really the exposure because I can always grab a graduated filter, drag it over the sky and make it a lot darker but um, the dynamic is really the thing that you want to look for. So let me play around with the rest of these sliders and just see whatever works best. Going both plus and negative exposure or negative and plus values and just see whatever works best here. So here is before the tonal curve adjustment, here's after, makes everything even a little bit more dramatic. So then I'm gonna grab a graduated filter for this guy and I'm gonna bring down the exposure as well as some of the highlights and maybe even play around with contrast and clarity. I know that this is a very dramatic and very artistic, maybe not so natural look, but that is actually what I'm going for here. I want everything to be very harsh and for these clouds to be very massive and very outstanding in the, in the whole picture. So that is exactly why I love to bring up the clarity, bring up the contrast, because that makes them stand out even more. So I think that does the job though, for now at least, I'm definitely going to play around with some more local adjustments a bit later, but for now 
how I mean the detail tool I've explained that in many tutorials and it's not really a thing that matters for the overall look at all so I'm just gonna leave that out same with the lens corrections effects uh, the vignetting here is very valuable in some cases definitely worth to play around with if the picture looks better with vignetting or without and some oftentimes I actually end up liking to add a little bit of vignetting because it really helps to give even more of a dramatic mood but also to give more attention to the center of the photo rather than the corners. So here is before that little bit of vignetting and here is after. And also camera calibration really doesn't have that big of an impact in a black and white picture so I'm not gonna change anything there either. So then let's look at the picture before I do any local adjustments and just think what am I going for, what kind of look do I want and what kind of lighting do I want to enhance. And I think, since this is already not really a natural picture, but a very artistic picture, I think I'm gonna go very far here with both plus and negative exposure. So let's get actually started off by grabbing an adjustment brush and going into the negative exposure and just adding some additional vignetting in just some parts where I don't want any bright parts to be. So here I'm really going for just some lighting patterns on this entire scene and then definitely adding some plus exposure to kind of hit the house to make that one stand out even more. So that would be before the additional vignetting and here is after. Really makes it even more dramatic and once again gives a nice starting point for uh, the plus exposure that I'm gonna add in a second. But before I'm gonna start with dodge and burning, let me grab another graduated filter and just drag it over the very po top portion of the sky here and just go far far down into the minus exposure. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, before it was kind of you know the eye wasn't contained in the picture and by just bringing down the exposure so much it really gives an additional sort of vignetting but it also helps to close out the picture so your eye is contained within the photo and I'm actually gonna do the same thing with the bottom although not that much and yeah I think that is a pretty good starting point so let me think is there anything else before I do that I'm burning I might just want to add some additional vignetting once again with the adjustment brush over just some portion of these clouds and another thing that I oftentimes like to do is to grab another graduated filter over just one portion where the light is kind of coming from and just drag a very soft edged graduated filter over that part and just increase the exposure a little bit and that way you create even more dynamic in your picture and of course with that additional interest. So now I really think I'm gonna go to dodge and burning and once again I really want this house to stand out so I first of all I'm gonna grab a pretty big rail filter here and go into the plus exposure and I kinda wanna make it look as if some of these light rays would hit this house. So let me grab one over here, maybe another one from this cloud right there. And you know, usually you want to make sure that you just enhance the lighting that is already there and you make everything look very natural. But uh, sometimes you can really, it really actually works if you do something crazy like this as long as you don't do it too much and of course if you have a very artistic picture like this you can of course always go farther than with a very natural and neutral looking photo. So then I think we've already complexified the light quite a bit from before to after but I think there is just a little bit additional um, plus exposure near this house region needed. So let's bring another radial filter right here and bring up the exposure even more and that way this house really really shines out. And from before to after you see it's a lot brighter and a lot more attention on the house but I'm gonna bring back some of that differentiation in the lighting on the landscape 
by grabbing a minus exposure rail filter and just dragging that one in between those two light rays that I've added previously. So let's see, make sure that I don't do it too much. And I think it works pretty well. And you know, there are a lot of other different uh, possibilities that you could do. Um, I could, for example, add a bit of plus exposure right here or somewhere else in the picture to add even more dynamic and even more interest. But once again, I really just want this house to be the main attraction of this photo. So I think I'm actually pretty much done with this picture here. Maybe I'm actually gonna grab another minus exposure radial filter and drag a very small one and a very wide one over this hill right here and just give back some of that darkness at the horizon. So yeah, I think that works pretty well. Maybe I've gone just a bit too far with bringing up the highlights down here in the tonal curve. So let me bring back some of that. And yeah, I think it works a bit better for the overall look. Once again, this is a very dramatic edit and a very artistic edit. Of course, you're not gonna be able to use all of these techniques and do it as much as I have done in quite a lot of the pictures, but I think it really works for this one. For example, if we go here into the history and see what the raw file looks like, and here is the picture converted to black and white. I mean, it's a ton of difference, looks a lot more dramatic. And even though I like really heavy editing, this is really, I think, one of the pictures I went the furthest with it. And, you know, it just happens to work. And the reason of this tutorial is really to show you what is possible and kind of the rough looks and uh, the techniques that I use to get contrast and to get dynamic and to get interest in a picture. It's a very special specific tutorial and it definitely doesn't work on every picture but I hope you could still take away some tips or techniques from it. I have done a few other black and white tutorials that are not quite as dramatic and that end up making the picture look a little bit more natural. But I hope you've enjoyed this video anyways. Be sure to like or dislike the video accordingly depending on if you like this kind of very abstract and very artistic kind of tutorial or if you would like me to do more organic and natural looking photo edits. It. But anyways, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope this dangling sound from the microphone is gonna go away pretty soon. At the moment, I really have a very, very bad and very ineffective setup with the microphone. But anyways, thank you once again very much for watching. Take care and I hope you have a great day.